So, any of you guys seen my review of Beauty and the Beast yet? Oh, is this in? You you went and saw the new one. Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was actually gonna ask Devin if she's seen it yet too. Yeah, she I enjoyed just it, saw it personally. She, she just saw it uh, today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think the my. I remember yeah, chatting with Morgan about it. I was like, you know what the. Uh, I'll I'll check out your review tomorrow before I get to work, but oh, okay. I will say this. It's like I'm I really enjoyed it personally. Mhm. But um I think that there were definitely things done better in this version than in the than in the original animated film uh in term in terms of in terms of story uh development like they were trying to it seems like they were technically trying to patch up a lot of different things here and there but the the only issue that it that it faces is that it's it's never it's never going to have the legacy that the original movie has yeah, I mean, like, most of the good things about the reboot, it's it's already been done. It's mostly thanks to the original. It, it's like, it, 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 like the, the new things that it developed in here, like, yeah, ba- basically that's mostly the thing, is that anything that, like, like, almost all the things that are good about this movie is mostly because they adapt it from the original film so it's like they already took something that's really good and they brought it in here and it's still good (sighs) yeah they well I, as far as the additions are concerned, also, I did I did like the uh, I did I do really enjoy the uh, the the uh, the song Evermore. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a great moment there. Yeah, that, that that song I will admit it's like that one is actually pretty good. I would say that it's probably the best of the new songs. Because like technically, there's also the the one sung by Celine Dion, and then like a few times here and there, like especially with uh, Maurice singing it at the beginning, like that one is good, but it's not as prominent as Evermore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the it's uh... yeah it. It was at that point where I was thinking. It, it's funny. I remember thinking, um, sitting back and watching it, and I was like, "It, it, it seems to when Evermore comes on for that moment, I felt like it was turning. I realized something. The movie turned into Les Mis Rob <laughs> for a bit in terms of how in terms of how it was being executed. All, all, all that was left. You've got you got the beast. Uh, strutting along the the top of the tower, uh, taught just throwing out this this incredible performance, and then all of a sudden, uh, you would you expect at any point that he's just going to be like, "My bell is nothing more. Another story must begin." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and already the movie has its own Javert, so. At least it's got that going for it. <laughs> oh yeah. Can you? Uh, that, that, at least we didn't go in that direction where they have they have everything, every other thing sung where it's just like, did you really think oh, yeah. that she would love you, Beast? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is true. At least it's not like a complete opera, so. 
At least it's got that going. Yeah. I mean, I, I I like the cute little nods they did they did here and there. I know a lot of folks were hoping to see human again in this one, but I I was I, surpri- it, I was honestly surprised because a lot of comments on my video said that a lot of people were were pretty sad that human again was not involved. Uh, no, but it was it was name dropped apparently. Well, I mean, like, it's not really that hard to put the words human and again together, you know? Yeah, I think I think they did that deliberately just as a nod. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I did actually listen back to our live-action Disney podcast and talk about the upcoming ones, and you reacted to talking about Beauty and the Beast. It was about the same back then it's just like unsure about the cast and all that stuff and so generally speaking though you did enjoy the remake um it's really mixed because i guess the whole summary is that i could see that it is beauty and the beast um like the story respectfully follows the um the original pretty well the songs are actually interpreted pr- pretty decently. Like the songs are good, and also um, I was surprised that the cast was actually enjoyable. Like I enjoyed Dan Stevens, I enjoyed Luke Evans, I enjoyed Ewan McGregor, I enjoyed Josh Gad. Like the roles are good, but the problem is that it didn't really have everything that made Beauty and the Beast um, like the masterpiece that we know. And I feel like there's a lot of subplots in there that feel absolutely pointless, like the whole. LeFou being gay, um, Belle's mother, like, that we didn't need to know. Um, oh, what what else? There's, like, a lot of them that are absolutely, like, they, they fill it with so much side plots that, that, like, they don't really have a point altogether. That and also, oh, God, I did not enjoy Emma Watson whatsoever. Well, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you on, on one of those points. Um... Oh, that and also, actually, yeah, the CGI is actually terrible. I hated the CGI. Like, the characters look like crap. Okay, for the for the dresser, I grant you. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, my God, the wardrobe. The, the wardrobe the is wardrobe. terrifying. That was the that was the only thing I turned over to my folks while, I w- while we were watching. I was just like, that, that wardrobe is nightmare-inducing. Um... But in terms of the side stories, though, um, I, I didn't. I didn't find. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't find the backstory about the mom to be uh, to be anything uh, of a distraction. I felt like that was an establishing point where they tried to actually. They they tried. One thing they try to improve upon in this version is giving Belle and the Beast something to have in common a lot more. And and uh, it's uh, you know in this case one thing is uh, oh they like reading some of the same books oh yeah they also have a dead parent and that's kind of a not a very fun thing but it's uh it's it's a disney territory so why not um that's where that comes from i think oh boy we have guests hello evan's family (laughs) okay she did not just say that. <laughs> Skype date. Hi, mom. Skype date. <laughs> Mike and Matt. Right, hey guys. Just, hey. Yeah, I'm just Glad. disappointed that the candles are not on for the date. The food was not so great. The food was not so great. What? Yeah, the day is being really bad right now. You're being a bad date, James. 
It's I'm I'm being a bad date. Apparently. A bad date. Mom called it a Skype date, so apparently I'm a really bad date. Oh. <laughs> Revenge. This is why they wanted me to turn on the turn on the fireplace. Of course. Yep. <sighs> so who are we waiting for at this point? Um could be Devin. We're just waiting to see if uh if uh, she, she if she'll feel better to come in. We'll see. She's not feeling good right now. Yeah. Uh, and she just saw saw another movie. Nope. Yeah. Talking to them. Yeah. Hey. hey. I heard you didn't get to see the whole movie of uh, Beauty and the Beast, huh? Uh, yeah. I had to. Uh, I, I had to. Yeah, I had to step out while. Uh, well, they got a little bit motion sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell you guys that part of the story, did I? Oh, God. Is it because the camera keeps turning around? Uh, I'll, uh... I'll, uh I, gotta, I gotta take care of this. No, it's simply... Be, it's simply because... It's simply because it was in 3D. We found oh. out the hard way that they... That uh, the kids did not uh, adjust well to the 3D. Oh, okay. Still happily working at Target. Great! Yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. If it wasn't for Phyllis back there, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be doing my job. But yeah, we got about five minutes in. And and this is the sad thing is that we brought we brought Bridget. Uh, it it was Bridget's birthday. She turned ten on St. Patrick's Day. So the day after, we were just like, oh, let's treat him to a movie. Let's go see a movie that they're gonna like, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, well, five minutes into the movie, she gets sick because it's in 3D and. My folks are. My folks are thinking it's the, it's the, uh, the camera, or or maybe the wolves scared her or something. Or maybe it's Emma Watson where... singing. <laughs> maybe it's Emma Watson singing. <laughs> Which she's she's not bad, but did she really need so much? Did she really need so much, uh, cleaning up? I don't think so. I don't know. It's just well. Either way, I just feel like. If it's auto tune or not, I'm not sure, but it's just her voice is not meant for theatrical productions like this. She's meant more for like pop, for like like modern pop songs, more so than something that would be meant as a musical or a Broadway production. Yeah, there's one minor setback that the that the film has is that uh, no opera singers or Broadway singers like they did with Paige O'Hara. Mm -hmm. But well, I mean, no. it's a lot. Well, it's a big budget live action reboot, so they rather want to have big name celebrities for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. And then, so why not go with Hermione? Uh, yes, uh, a uh, a rising star in the uh, in the uh, the new the age of new feminism now playing a character who's allegedly got Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> so. Because monies. But um, in any case, um, in any case, yeah, she got, she was getting sick. She had to take the glasses off. She was bending over and whimpering, and I was sitting next to her this whole time, like, Bridget, are you okay? Are you okay? And then, yeah, when the wolves came out before that, or just before that, we were already on our way out. So that's why they thought, oh, the wolves scared her. No, it was the whole. It was the whole nauseating 
experience of watching a film in 3D that she was just not used to. And you I can totally... 10? 10. Hmm. I know, right? Well, I went to go see... I went to go see 3D movies at IMAX theater back when I was in high school, and I got raging headaches. Because the 3D back then was terrible anyway. Well, yeah, but, but they were still experimenting with that. Because that was early on. Oh, they kind of kind of perfected it now, more or less. Yeah, yeah. maybe I kind of adjust... Maybe I personally adjusted to 3D my whole life just like through training at Disney just like going through the sessions of like Muppet Vision 3D and it's tough to be a bug in all those shows and even that was see when they see when they had those those rides and whatnot even the you have to admit the 3D is not exactly perfect there either yeah but true and it's that kind but then of again, like they're really trying to sell onto the three D. It's that kind of uh, technology that they used overall with um, uh, with with some of the IMAX films, and uh, that's that's partially why people came out of earlier three D movies. And the new age of three D, as opposed to you know nineteen fifties black. Uh, black and white, red and blue glasses, and then '80s reboot and all that cheesy stuff. They, they, uh, folks would come out of of movies like. Well, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt here. They came out of movies like Spy Kids 3D Game Over, and right. said, and said, "Hey, uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe, um, hello." maybe movies maybe 3d is just is just specifically delegated towards disney attractions mm -hmm. because it's meant because to be it wasn't a, a there, special yeah. novelty mm -hmm. i mean like i think i remember like it was i remember like specifically like every single trailer for an animated film from 2009 all the way up to I think maybe up to 2011 or even 2012, like all those, they really tried to sell hard saying that the movie is 3D. But nowadays, when you look at the trailer, they barely even mention it. They don't need to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just sort of, oh, is this, you look it up online really quick. Is this movie in 3D? No, no. Okay. Hey, you, yeah, we were just... Uh, we were just discussing the movie that you went to go see in the theater today. Oh, yes. Yeah, Matt and I will disagree on one thing. I'm sorry, but screw your opinion on Emma Watson because I <laughs> loved her as well. <laughs> screw that. <laughs> no, but actually, going in, into the 3D, James... Little um... town full of auto-tuning, <laughs> waking that. up to say... Yeah, that's why they flat. made... You're flat. You're flat. You're flat. You're flat. Yeah, that's why. That's why the whole village thought that she was odd is because she was the only one in auto tune. <laughs> well, no, but James, I actually, going into the three D aspect, like I know that the three D fad nowadays is dying, because you know what is actually officially dead? Three D hmm. TV. They're no longer making them. They're no longer yeah. going to make them going forwards. Yeah, it's no longer in production. You can look it up. Oh, well, I was, I was actually, I was actually slightly hoping for that. But anyway, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it just works better in theaters. So I think it could... just works better in attractions. Like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the if the 3D fad is gonna die out, because like the thing is, is that it it, it just feels like a little bit more expensive for nothing. Mm. I want to say, say so. Well, okay. It depends on the film because there are two different things. There's films that are actually filmed in 3D, and there's films that are converted into 3D. They're originally in 2D, yeah. so there might be differences in 3D quality. So 
it would be oh uh, that's so if you're watching a movie oh, that's, that's what 3D's used for. so if you're watching a movie that's converted into 3D the 3D and it might not be as perfect as it should be because it's originally in 2D if it's filmed in 3D it might actually look pretty nice but that depends on what movie you're watching yeah but then again if a movie is made in 3D and then you're going to go back watching it in 2D then you're going to get that distraction of seeing like all these weird things flying in your face. It depends on the movie I said. Sometimes a 3D won't be like the the at your face kind of 3D. It might be like more more env environment kind of like 3D that's like in the background kind of thing that pops out more. Yeah, like I know the wildlife was trying to be so hard to be freaking 3D. Because like every single time they try shoving a thing in your face. I'm but, missed that movie. <laughs> but I think I think Devin had a spiel uh, left. Oh. Yes, Mr. Matt interrupt me. You motherfucker, I'm giving you this for the first time tonight. Yeah, I'm just, yeah I just wanted I just wanted that quick thing to mention about 3D. Well, first of all, this is always for Matt. I give them to him every single time we're on Skype. <laughs> And you can uh, and you can have that and put on your 3D glasses and that'll be. Uh... Yay! You I know love what? that idea. I, I, I got an idea. Here, look at this. You can cross your eyes <laughs> until the two fingers meet. Meet. <laughs> yes. Yes. You are awesome. Thank you, James. You are on my side. I thought. <laughs> That's a high five for that one. As I was saying, um, considering I had expectations of, I really want this to be good, I got exactly what I wanted. Because <laughs> I was not expecting this to be anywhere near as good as the original. But I was hoping it would be a lot better than those goddamn sequels, and they were. And mm -hmm. it was. I'm sorry, I hate those sequels more than anything, and I still do. Even as yes. a kid, I hated them so much. There's and I... nothing more with Christmas. You know, you I had... even oh, sing that right. Our dreams will never die. I had that. I had the ad for that playing over at over at Target yeah. uh, during this during the holiday season when I had to when we had to. Uh, you get used to it after a while, but as long as Matt wasn't singing it. Because <laughs> you would re that would be painful. Merry <laughs> Christmas. I hope our dreams will never die. Christmas. Wrong song. Yeah, he's a failure. He he doesn't even know the right song. Fucking yeah, I, like I, I just know that first line, and then I'll just go to because it just sounds like um, if we hold on together, I'll just go with that. <laughs> You know what I'll hold on to? My favorite, favorite letter. As long as there is Christmas, it will be fun in the Great Valley. You're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Christmas! <sighs> you know, I can't wait for when a dinosaur runs you over because that will be amazing. I... <laughs> Well, as we all know, well, well, you know, we all know that dinosaurs didn't fully die off anyway. According to the flat Earth theory, we, uh, uh, we, the meteor came down, hit, hit the flat Earth, and the dinosaurs all launched off into space. So all they have to do is come back down. <laughs> yeah, it just hit the flat Earth, and the Earth was just like. <laughs> oh my! That's why God. the Earth. That's why the Earth seems round, is because it's spinning so much from the meteor hitting the freaking... Uh, <laughs> oh my... We're at the uh, edge of the Earth! Pay up, it's flat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's just like your brain cells. They're flat. <laughs> yeah. Smack I... them. <laughs> so, so, yeah. In term, But in terms of what what worked about the movie though for me i liked the little updates like i liked learning about um i liked learning about what happened to bill's mom i liked i like i like 
I thought that was great. I mean, I liked that Belle was trying to teach children how to read. That was great. Um, I mean, I, one scene only. You just... <laughs> what? For Shut that up. legit one scene only that was never mentioned again. That was cute. Shut up. Shut up. As I was saying, um, I like I like the little updates, but I think I did not. The visuals didn't bother me at all. I was actually fully for the. I thought the visuals were fine. I mean, I wasn't like I said. I wasn't expecting great. I was expecting good. And that's Even... I I don't mind. I don't mind it. the visuals at all. The beast never bothered me. Even when I saw the trailers, <laughs> I was yeah. not bothered by it. It didn't bother me. I just thought uh, it looked fine. <laughs> the, the, the only time, the the only nitpicky time that the that the beast visuals uh, did slightly bother me was there was one moment when he was lying down in the bed after being injured, and okay, I think I the that was a little creepy. Yeah, <laughs> there was something about the head movement and the hair pressing up pressing up against the 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 mattress. It looked almost like his hair dissolved into the mattress. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna deny that was a little weird. Um, though I will admit, I think the one thing for me I really liked because I'm always a music lover is this actually the score of the movie. Mm -hmm. felt... Yeah, okay, that I, that was actually pretty good as well. Oh, oh my god, there was a lot of times I was crying <laughs> during this movie. The score was powerful, and it really. But then again, me. it did take a, a lot of pages from the original. As well. Oh yeah, it did, and I liked the, some of the new songs. I liked Evermore especially. Yes. Evermore was wonderful. Yes, I was like, finally a good song for the Beast, and I did like some of the new additions or new. Days in the sun. Da, 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 da. I need uh, to get that I didn't like Days in the Sun. That one was I... like the most forgetful one of the new ones. I thought that one was okay. I think I liked, um, I liked the old edition. Evermore is probably my favorite of the new editions. I thought the other ones were okay. Yeah, I, like I was, like I was saying, yeah, well, you, you, well, you saw my my Facebook posting a uh, Les Miserables. Uh, okay, that was that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was the one. That was, it was during that performance that that I, I thought of that because it was like, you know, he's, he's, he's strutting across the, the top of the, the castle there, and I'm just like, okay, this is a totally lame as Rob moment. It's, in, in, terms of, in terms of how it's being covered and everything, it's like, he's putting everything into this. I want to know, I, I, I've been thinking about how they recorded him. I'm, I've been thinking about how they did that to his voice. And I think I think I figured it out. What it's the it? oldest trick in the book, or one of the oldest tricks. It's you know how if you you remember the uh, the the chipmunk singing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, they put the pitch lower. What? Uh, what you? What you have to do is is he's singing. Uh, they have to transpose the song so that he's singing at. A, a one key up from what it's supposed to sound like and then once he sings at that pitch they tr digitally transpose his voice a key down to give it a little bit more bass uh... make sense yeah oh, okay but well, some that... folks go on mm -hmm. no, no no you go on Dave but some folks have uh, have made a very interesting observation about the music is that they're they said, while he's singing it evermore, it sounds like he it sounds like he's getting less beast like as the song progresses, like yes. he's getting more human. Yes, so I noticed that too. <laughs> so here's what I think they did. Parts of the song they transposed upward for him to sing in early on, and then and then during the mid range stuff they just had him singing more or less in his regular voice i think it oh that oh makes I sense get it now. Now but then I again get it. the key goes higher and higher as the song progresses exactly 
So, so you would have to sing it in normal key, regardless. Otherwise, you'd be singing it. You'd be singing it really, really high in a higher key than your than your range is accepting. Okay, because yeah. well, I know, I know for like Evermore was my favorite of the new songs, but I will admit, like, I wasn't bothered by Emma Watson's auto tune. Maybe I'm so used to listening to bad pop music that it yeah, that's why there's. Pop- yeah, that's it's why there's another Les Miserables connection, is because the movie has its own Javert. <sighs> I want adventure in the great white summers. And then I'm smacking you in the face. And <laughs> so... There's something sweet and almost kind. But he was mean and he was coarse and unrefined. And now he's dear and so unsure. I wonder if he looked at me this way before. <laughs> no, and a bit alarming. No, wait. and a bit alarming. Who'd I ever thought that this could Smack. be? Peter, my hand is about as convincing as Matt's singing right now. It's about as convincing. <laughs> and I'm Shabba. <laughs> and you're a freak. <laughs> Do not forget me. Yeah, screw it. I'm grabbing another root beer tonight. This is just one of those evenings. Uh, so if you need me to join you, I can grab bottles easily. Oh, God. Okay. I do not need a drunk mic or anything like that because I will punch somebody. <laughs> I'm saying, I, I, James is drinking. I was like, like it. If you want to drink a buddy, I'll, I'll be your drinking buddy. Oh, boy. James, don't start the drinking buddy shit. Or you can. <laughs> James. I don't see why not. It's not like Morgan's coming. Yeah, it doesn't look like he is. Alright, I'm grabbing it. And he, he, he sent me a message. He's he's passing. Okay, good to know. But yeah, yeah continue your opinion on the film, Devin. Is well, there something that you don't like about it? Honestly, I really... No, I can't really think of anything that I truly hated about it, actually. I, like I said, I was not expecting it to be as great as the original. But I, it was funny, because, like, watching the movie and having a lot of the, the the original lines in my head, some of the movie was kind of, like, very... It's like I was feeling the original in my head as I was watching the remake. So it was kind of bothering me when some of the lines weren't exactly like the original, but... It was kind of minor, because you know how much I've seen the original so many times, but, um, I, put for me, I really wasn't bothered by it. I liked everybody. I liked the casting, especially for me. I loved Emma Watson. Then again, I watched Harry Potter with my mom, and my mom adores Emma Watson. So do I. Um, and, and maybe for me, I just thought she did a good job. I really felt she did a good job. I didn't think she was a great singer, but I thought she did a good job. I actually, I I think I think I've got it figured out with her voice. If it's not auto tune, here's the here's the thing about it. It's very very compressed. It's very uh, the you know the audio signal yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. the way they didn't interpret it. It's very very even. And yeah. a little too perfect in that sense, as opposed to say, everybody else, everybody else in town had uh, uh, had uh, their scales going up and down, pretty much. One would say normally. Yeah, well, because it's like I said, I knew Emma Watson wasn't a great singer, but then again, I I have the original for that, so mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna totally diss the film. I like the updates. I think, as I told Matt, I don't think it's as better than the original. I don't. Yeah, I think but the I, world is unanimous on that. Uh, there are some crazy people that think the this one's better than the original, but I'm going to disagree. Yeah, but whatever. But I will put this definitely as number two. I, put, I will definitely probably be buying this on DVD. And and I hate the sequels. I still hate the sequels. I think they're the worst thing to exist about Beauty and the Beast, so. Okay. 
See, I'm satisfied. But can we I'm... have a live action reboot of Belle's Magical World just so we can have Emma Watson go cross eyed? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Her singing I'm... already makes the audience go cross eyed, so. <laughs> <laughs> Every time she sings, everybody just goes like. <laughs> See, that's why I said that. This is why I said what I said in the chat earlier. They said. I, I, when I linked to the article that I that I found about it, they said, um, "Ooh, Han Solo prequel reveal iconic character's real name." Ooh. Um. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, Beauty and the Beast and Chance was what? Where? Where did I say it? Ah, here we are. Sean Bailey talks Beauty and the Beast's massive success. Says there are currently, quote, no plans for a sequel. Yay. I think they're going to be smart yeah, about like that. Just, yeah. That's the Please, thing. Just no. That's the, oh, yeah. that's the headline I was reading originally when I when I posted. And then when you click on the darn thing, it doesn't even click, contain that later portion. Of, that's why I was like, no, just no. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Like I said, they've done this, they've they've done the worst sequels they could imagine. You can't do anything else with the story. I'm sorry, you could have soap soap opera drama with, hey, I found a baby bird. You know, honestly, I think I might know why they're not really keen to do a sequel. Mm -hmm. I think think it's mostly responsible, uh, I think, um... Alice Through the Looking Glass is responsible because that movie kind of bombed at the box office. Well, yeah, because the first because one... Like, and I keep in mind, this is a sequel to a movie that made like a billion dollars at the box office. And now they released that and it barely made anything. So, yeah. like, I know in the future they want to make like a Maleficent 2 and a Jungle Book 2, but mm-hmm. they're not going to take chances with a lot of them. Right. I don't think so. I think the only one... Well, I, actually, funny enough, there are much... I went to the library today, and because to make Mr. Mixtape happy, look. Oh boy. (gasps) Well, I might as well talk about the remake, because literally, um, you know how I'm going to be starting my little personal side project? Yeah. She Jungle checked Book out is... the Flying Wolves movie. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, and don't forget to pick up the live-action reboot of Tarzan that came out before Tarzan. Oh, you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean Greystoke? Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> no, not that one. I mean the Jungle Book. Oh, right. That one. Oh, or you could, or you could do, oh. uh, or you could do Tarzan and Jane on Netflix. Either way. I've seen Tarzan oh my God, you're and going Jane. That was better than Tarzan 2. Oh no, that Tarzan and Jane. I thought you were going like, oh, I thought I, I thought you meant like Tarzan and the Ape Man. Oh my God. No, no, I meant I I didn't mean Disney's Tarzan and Jane. I meant the one that's a Netflix original series that Mike and I sat down and watched. And oh God, what did they do? Oh, and, I don't even need to know. I and, and I also, just... by the way, she doesn't even have Netflix, so she can't access them. So, meh. You are spared. Uh, well, I was gonna suggest Kiss cartoon, but we it's, it's we down. don't uh, we don't have that there. We don't Kiss, have that anymore either. Kiss yeah, Kiss cartoon is down temporarily, and they have a, a replacement site up now. I think yeah, it's Kiss um, cartoon dot io. Where yeah. is it at? Io. Yeah, they use yeah. io. It's Kiss cartoon they dot. They got several side websites just in case. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because okay. technically it's an illegal website, so... Oh, yeah. Well... Oh, wow, they did... I see. Okay, so they just uploaded uh, a cartoon called James the Cat. <laughs> James the Cat? Yeah. Oh, my God, you turned into a cat? Mm. I. Oh, my God, I would love to see Jaime Tooth the Cat series. There yeah. you go, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Oh sweet! They already got that Nine Lives spinoff. <laughs> uh. Oh God. no! James can't be a 
in a spinoff of Nine Lives. You're asking him to be tortured. I don't want him to be tortured. I would rather have you tortured. <laughs> I might as well watch a. I might as well. I might as well watch a better movie on here. Uh, Rock Dog. <laughs> oh, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Really? <laughs> it's okay. To this day, I still get people asking me to review that yeah. thing. I yeah. swear to Christ. Review it. Review it. It came. How? <laughs> Find a bootleg version of it, goddammit. <laughs> Yeah, illegally said it. Uh huh. You know, I can't wait for this next um bickering Matt and Mike show. Review Rock Dog. No. Review Mike. Rock Dog. No. Rock Dog. No. Review it. No. I will find you a goddamn copy. I'll send it to you, and you better review it. You better review this fucking movie. No. Here, they can. Uh... Here, here's a spin-off for, uh, for, for Beauty and the Beast. They can have Emma Watson remaking Sing Me a Story with Belle. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. I don't care if you review Rock Dog or not. I, I, it was... <laughs> this is fun. I love playing impersonation. No. <laughs> Dang it. It's fun. That's why it's fun. <laughs> People, okay. people, people watching this, do you want Matt to review Rock Dog? Leave a comment below. <laughs> Please vote down below. Should Matt review Rock Dog? Um, if he does, I'm not watching it with him. <laughs> I will tally all the votes, people. You're gonna tally all the votes. <laughs> Because yeah, you're recording been, this thing. I, I have because... I've been recording the whole time. <laughs> We've been just bullshitting. That's Mr. Mr. Yoga Man. Jeez. He, he has Mr. Food in his mouth right now. That, that, that's who it is right now. Hey, look! It's, hello, I'm Adamat. I'm currently eating my food. On Cinema Royale. <laughs> I was eating dinner earlier, so. But well, he's just. I'm just having a little bit of fun, dude. Oh, man. This is what I do. No. Yeah, this is our cinema lounge, right? Yeah, it is actually. It was really good, actually. Because uh, there was a brief discussion about being the beast, and then in the 3D movies, and then Devin mm. talked about your ding and dead, 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 dead. <sighs> oh, by the way, I want to make my little introduction since I just came late. Hello, people. Hello, I missed you all. <laughs> I didn't know that we were. Re I, I honestly didn't know we were recording. Like, Mike, you were just saying, all right, write down in the comments. I was there. Like, wait, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I've been munching, uh, like, I've been munching this whole time and it was recorded. Um, that's why it's called entertainment. Yes. Adamat was eating. No. Yes, Adamat was eating. Yes, people, you have seen it for the first time. I've seen him on the image. Him eating and munching. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nah, I'm just kidding. You've seen him eat before. You've seen him eat a banana. Yeah, but I was thinking, it was like, this must not be the first time, then. No. Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ, that's loud. Sorry, I, I thought I turned off my microphone there. Mm -mm. No. Oh, I honestly thought that was like the cue. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh, you think that was... Oh, the cue. Oh, sure. Hey, it's time to get going, people. Hey, hey, motherfuckers, let's get the fuck going. Okay. <laughs> oh, no wonder that I had the wrong microphone selected. <laughs> Okay. So. Yes, I want to use my Medi. <laughs> yes, I want to use my Yeti microphone, you stupid Skype. <laughs> you know, I'm actually quite entertained by this. Oh, hey, my God. What did you do? What did you do? 
bad joke. Okay. Uh, okay, so here's what happened. Here's what happened. If, if you can still hear me. Can you yes, hear me now? Still, yes, we can hear you. I tried to press the mute button, and then it... And, oh, you can't hear me now, can you? Yes. Okay, okay. We can still hear you. I tried to press the mute button on here so you guys wouldn't hear anything, but then I realized... But then I realized uh, the sound... When I saw you guys reacting there, the sound must be coming through the webcam. Yeah, but then muting, like, it can have its consequences. Like, for me, like, I had mute so that, like, people don't hear me munch. But it was during the same time that I can't even make my defense to, like, make my case about, like, the whole rock dog thing. Okay, you hear it's me like, now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. You can still hear me now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Why else would we say yes? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. the, uh... Because... The... Oh, son of a fish. Alright, now there's nothing. Now there's nothing. Oh, no. Ow, a, part of me, a part of me is honestly debating if, like, is he trolling us, or...? Oh, my fish is his dad. <laughs> Actually, I'll just be right back. Hold on a sec. Go ahead. Alrighty. Of course, I can't fucking hear you, so whatever. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Yes. Matt went to the bathroom. He'll be right back. Or he went somewhere. He'll be back. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. 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 Well, that just means that Skype has finally figured out my Yeti. Okay. Good. There you go. Okay. Now I can go mute. I'd say whatever the heck I want to because you guys can't hear a thing and I'm with it uh, and, and Matt's uh, gone in the corner and uh, you got a drink and you got nothing. I we just heard that too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I'm, hold on, I gotta do this, James, for you. <laughs> Freaking microphone to like, oh, and the yeah, I can say whatever I want. Like, you got a drink and I got nothing. And I'm like, well, you got a punch in the fucking face. Well, douche. <laughs> He's probably ignoring me anyway. Maybe his microphone is off now. I, I, I don't, don't even know. <laughs> Can't even hear anything now. Hey, you know what the, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna dance. I'm gonna be... Hey, do you want me to be Elmo? Because I can be Elmo for a few minutes. <laughs> hey, Mr. Rat, Mr. Mixtape. This is Elmo. <laughs> Elmo wants to sing. Can Elmo sing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elmo, Elmo can carry. Elmo loves you. Since Dad came back. <laughs> so that reminds me actually what do you guys think of the julia character oh i haven't watched that yet but i heard many great things about her i'm so excited about that i was um, showing that to I, I was showing that to Steph one day we were hanging out and she was just like mm -hmm. she was just uh she was so squeed up and she was like oh yeah I, I did, she was so excited about it like oh my god this is so great because it, it, yeah, they, they 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 have this character on here and she's a and she's a girl character with autism and it's kind of it's so amazing yeah that that was the rational that was the rationale right there it's a girl who's got autism but yeah you know it's it's kind of uh that's actually one of the that was actually one of the critiques that folks had with the character when they first started using it for online stuff a couple of years ago is that this character is they said they saying this is this character is not representative of most people with with high functioning autism because uh, it does not happen regularly with girls 
Screw you. I don't care. Screw, screw you. You don't know anything. Uh, just deal with it. And actually watching the clips myself, I think it's they've yeah, they they're not they're not making it a character who's representative of everyone with autism. It's just sort of these are these are actual things that uh, kids with autism do. They they have echolalia, they have rep they do repetition. Uh, they like to do sensory activities. They get, they get bothered by too much of a certain kind of noise. These are all, these are all symptoms that you can, that you can work with for a character. And then Mike is a symptom all on his own. You know, is my thing going to be the hand thing? And then is Mike going to be the guy with the sock puppet? Is that what's happening right now? Because I mean, is that what's happening? Is that what it's, is it going to be the hand thing versus the sock puppet? Shut up! Because that would be why? Oh, that could be the perfect <laughs> next crossover: the hand versus the sock puppet. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Matt, but whenever I'm on, you never know what's happening, do you? But there's one thing that I think they should do with the character eventually, if they keep using her as a regular. Yes. And that is... Huh? Oh, I was... I was uh, discussing the new Sesame Street character, Julia. Oh, Julia, right, right, right. Yeah, because I was doing Alma earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honest, honestly, I find it a little weird with Julia, because it's been a while since they've mentioned her, and I always thought that she was already on the show. But no, it's only until now that they decide to bring her in. It's like, really? No, no, she's been in the online storybooks and and the like, but not as a character on the show, which is weird. Yeah. Um, I think what they should do eventually is they have her to they have her saying, you know, one or two word sentences at a, at a time, except when she's singing songs. Um, eventually they should, I, I think it would be really neat if they just eventually moved on to have her say, have her saying more complete sentences, you know, and have the character progress a little bit in that sense. And I'll be like, oh, she's, she's learned a new word or a couple of new words. It's kind of, it'd be a nice little touching moment, I think. Maybe. Yeah. But from what I've heard, like they like they're really making sure to, uh, uh, like they are trying to make sure that they make her as authentically autistic as possible, down to the point that even the puppeteer is actually autistic, from what I've heard. Mm, no, she's not. Her son is autistic. Oh wow! Oh, is that what it is? Yes, she. The puppeteer that they hired is a is a mother of a son who's autistic, who's also uh, who's also been a therapist to autistic children. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. she has done her freaking homework. I mean, you were kind of born into the role at that point. Exactly. She probably she probably started she probably learned how to how to do puppet work as a therapist because trust me I, I went I did years of therapy they those people they've got puppets left and right in the room you know that's awesome actually that is pretty impressive I'm very I mean I may need to look at the clips myself but I think it's great that they finally have you know it's something for everybody or you know somebody to connect with especially people with lots of them but I think it's great Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited about that. So much so much winning news this week. Mm -hmm. Yay. And by the way, I forgot mm. to mention this about um Beauty and the Beast. I mm. was kind of shipping Lefu and Gaston. 
<laughs> you know that that wouldn't work. I know that's the sad part. Though um, I will admit my favorite. That's why it's more important to ship uh, Lafu with Stanley. Oh, here. Oh, no. I... No. No one fucks like Gaston. No one sucks like Gaston. What do you mean? What do you mean? No. What were you thinking? No, I'm sorry. But when you said Stanley, I'm thinking. Why the hell do you want to ship LeFou with a troll? <laughs> Seriously? No, no, I mean, no, like the oh. Stanley, like Tom, Dick, or Stanley, the one that actually liked being dressed up all pompous, like all pretty like at the end. I'm sorry, I had a completely different Stanley in my head. I was like a troll. Like, in fact, I think the movie did that actually right at the end, like during the whole dancing scene, and then suddenly LeFou bumps into Stanley. Oh, yeah. And they start dancing with each other, yeah. Yeah, that's that family. I had no idea. I think that's so. the most you would get for a gay moment. Yeah. Or you could, uh, or or you could ship him with Stan Lee. Oh, Stan Lee. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no, oh my god. I'm sorry. When I was thinking of Stanley, I'm like, I was Stanley. I was like, what? Why would you ship him with the troll from Central Park? Well, technically, the animated Lefou and Stanley do look similar. Well, that is true, but... They're probably can... brothers. You They're should not ship brothers. brothers. <laughs> is, it, is everything absolutely green, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> I like to close my eyes and all that I could see making it perfect. Oh my god, I kid you not. There There's all been... kinds of hairy nipples looking back at me. No, I oh, kid you not. No. There have been instances when me and my friend, we would end up being so drunk, we would have karaoke's of that song. Um. <laughs> uh, that is no joke. Oh my god, I, I would want that recorded and I'd have that as blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's hilarious. Picture a perfect place that's bright and shiny and absolutely green. To be fair, though, I've done something just as bad where I was completely drunk and my friend and I were doing karaoke. We were singing as long as there's Christmas. You know what? Fuck <laughs> you. That's not what I... <laughs> absolutely uh, green is not... Is not all that bad of a song. It's just a. Uh... It's not. Yeah, the song is actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I'm like, no, I was gonna say before you interrupted, Matt. Um, <laughs> I was normal. Um, I literally uh, with a friend of mine, and we were completely trashed, and we were singing a High School Musical. Oh we were in the mood for High School Musical. I don't know why. Then again, I can't. Then I was like, oh boy. I remembered all the high school musical CDs the next morning. On the <laughs> <laughs> you will you wake up next to those CDs and you're like, who are you? Who are you? Oh. Living in my <laughs> own world. Who the hell are world. you? <laughs> I'm just... What the fuck? Why am I having visuals in my head of fucking a llama? What is wrong with you? Demon llama. Demon Lama, where? Lama face. Why would I? Why would I want to sleep with the llama? You're the criminal mastermind, not me. I am. Sad man. Don't sleep with any llamas. Llamas are terrible. Especially Cusco. What about the Cusco shippers? No. Ship him with Shrek. <laughs> because Shrek hasn't been shipped enough. Alright, we could ship you and Shrek together, Matt. Matt, and people say Animata's love, Animata's life all the time on the Animata fan club. It's hilarious. We've <laughs> already been shipped with Hitler. Did, did people legit do that? Yes, they do. They did. Oh my god. I love it. And let's not forget our encounter with our Animat fan co-host Amelia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's the cause of many shippings. Well, yeah, my favorite will always be though, Matt and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> no, like the only thing I can think of is that video. It's like, uh, oh, what was it? It's like an in sync Backstreet Boys song with Hitler in a church and like Shrek f- and Shrek is there and they both fall in love. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. it's like you're tearing up my heart when I'm with you, <laughs> baby. I'm in love when I need you. <laughs> the internet. I love you and you are so weird. <laughs> oh my god. And then I decided and then like I decided to touch upon a little bit of like that Shrek meme a bit like to do with uh with the with the little Ryan hip bit in the Mr. Code award. Oh yes. Me. You know, it's me, 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 me. You like jazz? Oh you know, I'm, 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 I'm flattered to have won the, uh, the uh, best writing award for the Lorax episode, which I gladly share with Morgan, who, uh, who helped with that one, oh, yeah. but. Somehow having that being announced by Ryan Hip just uh, doesn't feel as special. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Hey, James, how tall are you? Actual size. (laughs) How tall are you? Uh, It's all about being together, you know? Uh, it's all about being together.